I don't know if I'm jaded or if I'm an individual that just has no hope in his favorite team after what he saw this year, but I am actually shocked that the Los Angeles Lakers were able to pull this off. Now, this video is going to be fairly comical because I really think it's as a result of one play that the player that ended up getting cut in this video, DeAndre Jordan, ended up getting cut, but we have a bunch to get to. The Lakers are making probably the biggest move that they've been able to make since the Russell Westbrook trade right now, and it should at least moderately boost the team before we get to the content we're giving away $500 to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel we're also giving away $500 to one of our followers on Instagram now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro Mike Chuck 1212, what's going on everybody? If you remember when Goran Dragic officially signed with the Brooklyn Nets, I said that there was a part of me that was holding out hope that the Los Angeles Lakers would be able to swing in and make a signing. And to be honest, when I heard the Lakers were going to opt for the buyout market as opposed to becoming major players in the trade market prior to the trade deadline, one, a part of me was a little disappointed, don't get me wrong, but two, I also understood that there was probably no hope for the Lakers to trade for anyone whatsoever. Their best opportunity to marginally improve their team was trading Russell Westbrook for John Wall, and you'd have to give up your 2027 first round pick in order to do that, which pretty much handicaps the Lakers for the next six years for a very marginal improvement at that. And that's nothing against John Wall. I'm a huge John Wall fan, but if you think going from Russell Westbrook to John Wall, who has yet to play a single game this year, is going to improve the Lakers and fix them and automatically make them into a championship contender, then, well, you need to hop off the 2K My GM mode. But ultimately, it seems like the Los Angeles Lakers are doing their diligence on the buyout market. I was hoping that we'd see individuals like Eric Bledsoe or Eric Gordon on the buyout market, but it seems like it's not shaping up to be at least what it was last year when you saw LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin hit the buyout market, which of course, in hindsight, it's they're clearly not the players that they once were, but I remember at the time we were all getting kind of overwhelmed by the fact that Andre Drummond was hitting the buyout market as well. Needless to say, this is probably the best move the Lakers could have made given what they've gone through over the past 24 hours. Bear in mind, the Lakers only have 22 games left this season, so they really need to come up with a solution to their problems quickly. Now, unpopular opinion, I'm not the type of guy that likes strictly pinning the Los Angeles Lakers woes on Russell Westbrook. I do think it's a part of it, but I think their biggest issue is their lack of depth. I mean, you're counting on Malik Monk to score like 30 points a night. You're putting Russell Westbrook on the floor with LeBron James and Anthony Davis if we're lucky enough to see LeBron James and Anthony Davis share the court with Russell Westbrook and ultimately the problem is once the mediocre trio of Russell Westbrook Anthony Davis and LeBron James goes to the bench which again all three of them are fantastic players in their own right I just don't think they mesh well together well you go to a bench that's composed of Trevor Ariza Carmelo Anthony who's performing fairly well Austin Austin Reeves. Pretty much what I'm trying to say here is the Los Angeles Lakers bench isn't necessarily the most exciting bench. I know we were hyping up this bench in the offseason. Oh, look at the veteran minimum players that the Lakers were able to pick up and Kendrick Nunn, but we have yet to see Kendrick Nunn play. And well, the players that, that are being signed to veteran minimum contracts are playing exactly how a player on a veteran minimum contract is supposed to play, which is not very well. Save for Carmelo Anthony, he's actually surprising a lot of us this year. With that being said, last night, there was a famous clip where DeAndre Jordan got the rebound, tried to make an outlet pass, and literally threw the ball out of bounds. And as a result, I don't know if this is like a cause and effect thing. I don't know if this is strictly the reason why this is happening, but we got some breaking news that the Los Angeles, and this is according to Sham Sharanya, by the way, that the Los Angeles Lakers intend to waive DeAndre Jordan and sign free agent guard DJ Augustine. Sources tell at The Athletic and the stadium that the Lakers are bringing in 
a veteran accomplished shooting point guard to back up Russell Westbrook. Now, what I'm really hoping happens, and I don't think this is going to happen, but I would love for this to happen. I would like to see DJ Augustine start and Russell Westbrook to come off the bench. I feel like once you have a situation where LeBron James and Anthony Davis have spacing, then things are going to look a little bit better for the Lakers and Russell Westbrook could come out with the spare parts of the second unit and try to create some offense with a unit that might struggle typically to create some offense. This isn't a knock on Russell Westbrook, but think of it this way. Russell Westbrook is pretty much approaching those Andre Iguodala 2015 Golden State Warriors years years and I feel like he would be best suited as such if you're not excited about DJ Augustine then you need to get excited about DJ Augustine no I'm not saying this because we're down terrible as Laker fans I'm saying this because he is easily the best shooter that the Lakers have automatically on their team like this signing cements it he is automatically the best three-point shooter on the roster for the season he's played in 34 games in those games, he's only played about like 15 minutes. He played with the Houston Rockets and he shot 40.6% from three. To give you an idea, the man is shooting better from three than from his actual than his actual field goal percentage. But at this point, as Laker fans will take it, a perfect spot up shooter to put next to LeBron James to create some offense, who is definitely going to cost us defensively a little bit. But hey, at this point, at least it's a signing that makes sense. But this isn't the only player that the Los Angeles Lakers went out and signed. According to Shams there will also be an additional signing of an individual which, I'm going to be honest, not a guy that I'm too familiar with. According to Shams Charania, the Lakers intend to sign forward Wenyan Gabriel on a two-way NBA contract. Gabriel has had stints with the Nets, Clippers, and Pelicans this season, showing flashes of athleticism and versatility at 6'9". The only research I could really do on this individual is just taking a brief look at his statistics to see the type of player that the Lakers are currently going after. And if I know anything about the Lakers, they're currently going after players that could potentially turn into some semblance of a competent 3 and D type player. And if you look at Wenyan Gabriel so far, he hasn't really played that many games and it's actually absurd to really hold these statistics as anything serious. He's averaged two points, two rebounds and 0.3 assists, but he's shooting 40% from three and he's six foot nine. So maybe there's something there. I could see why they're sending him to the G League. At this point, the question, uh, the question I have is, what is going to happen with Kendrick Nunn? Uh, apparently, every single time he's tried to ramp up his activity, things have slowed down. Very similar to what's happening with Zion Williamson. Now he's feeling well enough to try to ramp up activity once again, but this signing should pretty much tell you that Kendrick Nunn's probably not gonna play for the Lakers this season. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this signing. Do I think this is going to lead, result in the Lakers winning championships? No. No, but I at least it's a signing that makes sense and gives the Lakers some depth and at this point that's really all you can ask for for the last 20 games the team is going to be at least slightly better than what we've seen so far let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this besides that I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload